Hey guys, welcome back to Starcastic Remarks. My name is Ryan Chambers. To my left is James. To my right is Christian. We are the official Dallas Stars podcast of THPN. Thank you to our sponsor, DraftKings, for being our sponsor of this episode, this podcast, and the entire Hockey Podcast Network. Please go ahead and use that promo code THPN next time you're there. And guys, along with all of that stuff out of the way, tomorrow the season starts. How excited are y'all? It's hockey time in Texas. This is great. What a great time to be a DFW sports fan. I mean, we got the, the Cowboys playing arguably the biggest game in the NFL so far this year, this weekend. Amazing. Stars start hockey. There, lots of question marks. A lot of people think they're going to be great. A lot of people think they're going to suck. We don't know what's going to happen. We, nobody knows. Everyone's an idiot. Everyone's stupid. We're Us too. Why are you listening to this? But it's exciting. It's going to be fun. If nothing else, the season is going to be fun. If you if you have somebody who you want to introduce to hockey, this is the season to do it. This is the time because this is going to be a fun season. Just don't introduce them to Matt Murray, right, James? No, don't do that. <laughs> I I I know that you know Maple Leafs fans are you know really hard to you know to listen to and stuff like that because there's so many of them. But I feel bad for them tonight. They lose yeah. their first game in like less than 30 seconds remaining in the game. <laughs> That's right. Worst anyways, yeah. Any day, anyways, James, what are what are you up to? How you've been doing? Um, I've not been doing much, but I'm really excited for Stars Hockey to start. I've been waiting too long, it feels like, and it was still a shortened off season. So Right, exactly. So uh, we're, we're going to get into a lot of stuff here tonight, guys. Like, I mean, we've got a lot. So we're going to be like going through it as quick as we can. Um, we Before we start off, though, we do want to mention that we will be continuing these Wednesday night live streams throughout the season like we were doing through the off season as well. So uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out like what that means for like if a game start happens, you know, during that time, if it's like on the West Coast and it's a Wednesday night or something like that. Uh, we haven't quite figured that out yet, but you know we'll get to it when we get to it. But uh, we, we will love also, feedback, right? And we will also be continuing those uh, after game reviews as well. Although because of how long we went <laughs> in years past, the past couple of years, the plan is to try and keep those as short as possible. So yeah. if it's a really good game and we're really excited, maybe it goes to 25, 30 minutes. If it's like a really bad game, it may be like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> So yeah. we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're really excited for uh, this season. Um, and, and, you know, every team should be at, at this point in the year, unless you're like Arizona or Chicago or something like that. Well, and I, I, I might have put Montreal into that category, too, if it wasn't for tonight's game. But they, they want beat the Maple Leafs tonight. So go figure, whatever. That's what I'm saying. Even those teams, you got something to be excited for. You got these young guys. Let's see who's good. That's still exciting, too. Yeah, and that's true. And and I mean, like Arizona, they they do have some young guys who who can play and who are doing really well. They've got uh, Chicago. It looks like they they're going to start their rebuild uh, th- this upcoming season. They they've got a rough rough time ahead of them for this year. And of course, you know, you got the whole Patrick Kane situation. Where's he's yeah. he where's he going to go? I mean, and it I don't even know if he's going to be able to go anywhere because ev- there's too many people that are like literally right at the cap. I'm not joking. I think the Maple Leafs, when they started the game, were $33 under the salary cap. Not $3,300, not $330, $33 under the salary cap. Nice. So it's, uh, I mean, it is a capologist nightmare. Or it's like I, six I guess, Taco Bells. Yeah, right? And that's it. It's six Taco, it's Taco, Bells. Six Taco Bells. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> that's, that's straight from the mouth of a college student. So perfect. Okay, um, anyways, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some NHL news. Um, we, we got some interesting uh, questions that the hockey guy kind of put out there in one of his recent videos, and I, I just picked a couple of them that I thought would be interesting for us maybe. And, I mean, there were some other ones like, you know, is Matthews going to score 60 goals again, which I think he probably does. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of that, of that stuff. Uh, we'll get into some star stuff. There's a lot of star stuff here. Um, uh, Uri Kralik, who is actually a guest on this podcast, uh, he is now a writer for Defending Big D. So shout out to Uri for that uh, really, really cool writing gig that he's got now. And he actually wrote a very interesting article about Ryan Suter, and I want to get into it a little bit. We're not going to get like deep dive into it, but 
you know, you a lot of people, he deep dives, he deep dives. And I highly suggest you go and read it because it's very, very well written. Um, we're going to talk about some of the obvious news that happened over the past uh, week uh, with uh, Stankoven, Damiani, Harley, uh, Will Butcher, all that stuff. We're going to look at some of the open the opening night roster and what the line com- combos may look like because we have a solidified roster of these are the guys that are on it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some storylines. You know, what are we excited about going into the season? What are we kind of worried about with this team going into the season? And we'll kind of go from there a little bit as well, guys. Um, so... Let's just start off, just, let's just dive straight into it. We're going to start with the Hockey Guy uh, video questions. Um, the, the, I guess the title of the video, if you want to go watch it on YouTube, is questions I'm anxious to learn the answers to for the 22-23 season. Um, the first one I wanted to kind of talk about was who will tank the best? <laughs> Who's going to be the worst team in the NHL in y'all's opinion? And, and give some reason why you believe that team will be the worst team in the league. Yeah, still the safest bet is Arizona because they don't have really any redeeming qualities at all. So if I was a betting man, I bet Arizona. And plus, their players, the players that they do have, are even more disgruntled because they're not in an, an NHL stadium. They don't have a stadium. Let's let's be honest. They're borrowing a college stadium for three years, four years. That's Maybe nuts. Five. Nobody's going to be happy about that. No, but it, it is going to be interesting, though. We've talked about that that possibility on this podcast. Um, there was actually a guy we did an interview with or that I did an interview with who actually goes to Arizona state. And he's actually really excited to see the stars play the coyotes there. So uh, that's going to be really interesting. And I think can get just tickets. <laughs> yeah. Just for the spectacle, the spectacle of it, the fact that it's going to be such a small arena, such a small atmosphere. And you're going to see like top quality NHL talent. Like, I mean, think about it. Connor McDavid is going to play in front of 5,000 people. <laughs> in a college stadium. That, I, I mean, that's that's. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's great, but it's in, it's at least interesting, right? I, I'm not excited for it. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm. I hate starting off the podcast in such a bad mood, but it, that makes the NHL look kind of like a joke. Like you're playing in this tiny little stadium with, like we have AHL stadiums bigger than that. Like the 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 arena in Cedar Park is bigger than that. It, yeah, the Allen Americans. Uh, Allen American, I think, is about the same is size. About the same size. So yeah, that's ridiculous. A professional hockey team should not be playing games in a stadium like that. An NHL like, it, team should not be. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it it's a joke. Anyways, James, I didn't get the answer to your to to my question. What do you think? It's Arizona, or do you think it's somebody else? Um, I think you look out for the Blackhawks. Honestly, <laughs> they sold everyone, and their goaltending is not good either. The only people they have left is Kane and Taves. That's it. If if and if they find deals where they leave, then their team really is nothing. Yeah, they'll be gone by trade deadline, I think. <laughs> oh, 100%. No, they, they, I, th- I think it will be the trade deadline just because of the cap situation for both of those guys. They both make over $10 million. And even if they you know, retain 50% of it, that's still $5 million. So, it, I mean, as the season goes on, that cap hit will go down. So I, I think it's just going to – it's just going to take till the till the trade deadline for that to happen. Um, my only thought on this is like, you know, we, we talk about the teams that are going to tank, but there's always that one team that surprises everybody about being the worst team in the NHL. Like, like Philadelphia, for example, like two years ago, they were actually a pretty decent team. They weren't like super fantastic or anything, but they were still good and respectable. And then they've gone through some sort of injuries. You know, that team hasn't been run well, so maybe it's Philadelphia, but, uh, I still got to go with. Arizona, that's just the easy one if I was a betting man on that. So, If I was to throw one other team in there, I'd throw the Sharks in there almost because, I mean, they're getting that's really an old. Choice. And the, the only reason why it might not work is because they still have Reimer, and Reimer is just a really good goaltender over there. Mm-hmm. So, and if, they do have they, Capo Kakin in a, out there too. Yeah. I mean, honestly, though, that team – isn't looking great they didn't look great last year they didn't really do anything to try to get better so and really all they did is they just signed their their top guys to extensions which doesn't exactly tell you we're in a rebuilding situation like you know with chicago they signed a bunch of these one-year deals with guys who are just kind of meh right so uh, that's an interesting choice james i I, that's an interesting dark horse for who will think best 
Um, who's the better goalie? Who's the better goalie? Is it Igor Shosturkin or is it Andre Vasilevsky? Battle of the Russian goaltenders. Who's better? Vasilevsky. Regular yeah, season, I'm going to go with Shosturkin. And that's why I took Vasilevsky. <laughs> because he won the second <laughs> Stanley Cup by himself for Tampa Bay. So, yeah. Vasilevsky's better. Is wait, is there another name you might throw in there other than one of those two that might Jake be better Ottinger. than those two? <laughs> if if Jake Not Ottinger plays save percentage, he's on the biggest high of his life after that playoff series. Yeah, he just got signed if, to a brand new deal. He solidified number one. Yeah, if he plays anywhere near the caliber that he did in that playoff series for an extended period of time, he will have a very he, he will have people turning their heads. People will be looking towards the stars and oh. specifically. Well, they, they, he's already doing that, to be honest well, with yeah. you. The heads They've already turned. He was, he, was at, he was at the NHL media tour or whatever they called it, right? Like he, like he was the guy that went and did all the interviews with all the media dudes, all right? Like he was the one. It wasn't, it wasn't Rope. Uh, it, it wasn't Robo, obviously, because of contract stuff. It wasn't Jamie Benn. It wasn't Tyler Sagan. It wasn't even Miro. It was Jay Gottinger because he's the hot new commodity that nobody knew about, and now he's well known. And I hope that that kind of pressure and that kind of uh, attention—I'm not saying will go to his head because it won't, because he's a really good guy. But I hope that he performs better under that pressure because yeah. he's going to be I looked mean, yeah. at quite well, a bit. A, a lot of season previews, a lot of people pick the stars as like the underdog cup contender, actually. So, and every single person's reasoning for that was if Jake Ottinger can figure out what he did in the playoffs and do it all year long, that's a Vesna caliber goalie, and this is a team that's going to get better. And that's how you are instantly a cup contender. I mean, yeah. goaltending is the most important position in this sport. So, And honestly, on your point of pressure, Ryan, we've seen Otter do particularly well, and honestly, in most cases, better when he is under the pressure. He yep. plays very well in those situations. So. Yep, we saw it at the end of the regular season. We were trying to sneak in. We saw it definitely in the playoffs, obviously. So a little more pressure in the regular season. Feels like it can't hurt. And we'll talk about him more later in the podcast, too, when we get to more Stars-related stuff, because there's more to dig in there, too. Um, okay, uh, will penalties be called differently this year? Because, you know, there's always the penalty that the NHL focuses on every year. And, like, for the first month or two, it's like, they call ticky tacky stupid penalties or whatever. I haven't really seen anything that's shown that the NHL is going to focus on like boarding yeah. or, or I think like last year, what was it? Uh, cross checking. Cross checking. It was cross checking last year. Yeah. That was the one that they kind of did it. And then it eventually goes away and they just call it like they have in the past. But it, it always, it always like leaks out though. Like what, what's going to happen? You right. know, like we normally hear about something before the season starts because the year before last, I it was slashing. I haven't heard anything. Have y'all heard anything at all? No, I haven't heard anything about it. But the year before last, it was slashing. And we heard about that before the year happened too. And it was because Crosby hacked the guy's finger off. So I haven't heard anything, which is kind of strange, but hopefully that means officiating won't be a big deal, <laughs> but it always ends we'll up being. Do, do you think they just need to call the rule book or do they just need to completely never, change the way they do it? Or what, there, what do y'all think? There's never going to be a call the rule book. People are always going to rule book doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> the rule book doesn't so, exist. It doesn't. It's well, definitely rulebook. for goaltender interference. It doesn't exist, but that's true. Whatever. Say lovey. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, we could go into a whole podcast just about that. Um, uh, will scoring continue to go up? Um, th yes. there's a big debate about this. Um, We've obviously seen scoring going up in the past couple of years. Uh, a lot of that has been due to the fact that we've seen guys like Connor McDavid and uh, Leon Dreisaitl, Austin Matthews. These guys just go and score ridiculous amount of points. I mean, like at one point, uh, no pun intended, uh, Connor McDavid was like at a 176 point pace, which we haven't seen since like the 80s. So, do you all think that scoring is going to continue to go up or do you think it's going to kind of plateau and, and get to a certain level? What nope. do you all think? Scoring to the moon. I mean, the stars are just another example of a franchise that has abandoned defense and is going to go full offensive. hand. So <laughs> that we're would about be nice. to see it with us. That would be very nice. Yeah. What do you think, James? Especially with how the league's moving away from the slow, older people and moving towards the younger, fast paced a game that we see now it's it the scoring is going to continue going up 
Do, do you think it's going to go up like by quite a bit, or do you think that that uh, that trajectory is just going to be just down just a little bit less than it was like last year? Maybe like five points up, eight points, like on an average. On an average, okay, yeah, and and, and that's fair to say too. Um, so the, the last question I want to get into here is, and we can't say the stars because we're kind of biased against this, but the stars. I, what <laughs> screw you, James? <laughs> uh, what dark horse team do you think could make the playoffs? Oh, well, and it could be out good. of I mean, either the Eastern or I the hope West. The stars West. aren't a dark horse to yeah, make they, the playoffs. I think, I, I think for a lot of people, I think we're considered a dark horse. I well, really do. Oh, we, we can get into that because I've I listened to a bunch of different preseason uh previews and they're all over the place. Like I was saying, some people have us at contenders. Some people have us as like lottery team. So (laughs) nobody has any clue right now of what the stars are doing. And that makes sense when you're changing a system and adding so many young players. Yeah. And it feels like that's part of like all the central right now too, because people don't know how the wild they're going to do with all their cap stuff, like messing up their team and things and people don't know how the blues are going to do since they had like eight 20 goal scores last season. Are they going to do that again? That's highly unlikely. And, and no one knows what Nashville is going to do either because they they're kind of just the same and they should be good, but we don't know. So the central's just in a really weird spot. When you look at the central, any of the six teams that are there, Right now, I think could make us. I mean, and I'm including Winnipeg in that too, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Rick Bonus, he could go in there and he could turn the Winnipeg Jets around. Um, he did go in there and obviously there were some, you know, off the ice issues. If you drip the captaincy from Blake Wheeler, that's a big deal. But uh, still, any of those six, I mean, they've got Connor Hellebuck. And I would argue right now that Connor Hellebuck is a better goalie than Jay Gottinger. He's definitely oh, more right. established. So more established, yes. Yes. So I would go, I, I mean, he they definitely could. Um, but for me, I think my dark horse to make the playoffs, not to win the Stanley Cup, obviously, but to make the playoffs is I'm gonna go with Ardell. I'm gonna say the Senators. Yep, and I, it's kind of the sexy pick right now, just because of all yeah, the yeah, things they did. Losers. Sexy pick. Yeah, it's the sexy pick, and it's it's the obvious pick because of all of what they did. They got they went out and they got Alex to bring it for basically nothing for what he probably should have been worth. Uh, you go out and you get uh, Claude Giroux. You, with, yes, he's 32, 33 years old now, but he doesn't have to be you know, super fast. He's got Tim Stutzla and Alex DeBrinkett, who are both younger guys, on his line with him, it looks like. And then their defense looks fantastic, too. They've got a young guy in Jake Sanderson who was drafted like second overall back in 2020. He, he kind of looks like a, uh, a Jamie Alexiak, but with a higher ceiling than Jamie Alexiak even. Uh, you've still got... And then kind of took a little bit of a hit with uh, Cam Talbot being hurt. But I think that's that that's a pretty decent team. It really is. And I, I think they have the best shot uh, for being a dark horse to get into the playoffs. And that's that's my pick. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to choose a different team, though. I'm going to choose... Uh, the Canucks. Cause That's another good one. Yeah. I like that one too. The Canucks with Bruce for a full season kind of sounds scary. <laughs> yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll add one more too. I did have this one in mind. Uh, Anaheim is another really dark horse. Really? I'm not sure about that one. Troy Terry and Zegers are just getting better as they go on. Uh, throw in our guy Klinger. That can really help out. It's a young team. That, they didn't add a lot. They added Klinger. That was pretty much it. But the young players are going to get better. So I think Anaheim has a real shot of getting in, especially if they make a move midseason for one of those Chicago boys. That could really help out. I think they might have signed one of the Strom brothers, too. I, I can't think, remember if it's Dylan. I think or you're wrong, Chris. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why right now. Tell me why. Because they sold because they were in a playoff spot last season, come around December, and mm-hmm. they sold everyone. And basically got rid of everybody. So I highly doubt that they would come out this season and try to get people to try to make the playoffs. What? Why'd they sign Klinger then? To trade him, to trade him at the trade deadline and get assets for him. That's why. I don't know. I think this team could force their hand and be good and just make them not trade people like that. I seriously think that this team is a good team. 
The only reason I would even consider that, Chris, is for one reason and one reason only. And that one reason has two words. John Gibson. That's it. He's he, he is he gets overlooked so much because of the fact he's been on, playing on a really bad team. And yeah, he hasn't been as stellar the past couple of years, but he's still I mean, he, he's still he's one of the best goalies in the league. He is. He is one of the best goalies in the league. I, I'm not sure if he's top five, but I would definitely for sure put him top 10. Y'all are just adding on to why this is such a great pick. All right, moving on. But he has to play <laughs> like Jake Ottinger 2.0 in the playoffs, yeah. but in the and regular Zegers season and Terry, in the playoffs. And Zegers and Terry need to be in the mix for point leader. I, I, I feel just like that could happen. It. I don't see it. I, I see it. That's why it's a dark horse. This is a real you have dark a weird horse. vision, Chris. Yeah, that this that a, this is a that real is dark true. Horse. See that Van is a Hoover real dark stands, horse. Whatever. Anaheim's a dark horse. Is Vegas considered a dark horse? No, no. They've missed the playoffs one time in their existence. They're not a dark horse. <laughs> and though they lost Pacioretty, they lost Coglin. They don't have Robin Leonard for the entire season. They have I Logan Thompson. Vancouver as a dark horse, so I don't care. You don't think Vancouver's a dark horse? I think they're definitely a dark horse. They were so good at the end of the year. And that's true, too. And Vancouver, yeah, and that's a good point, Ardell. Uh, Ardell is mentioning here on, on YouTube. Vancouver has a good goalie. Thatcher Demko, 100%, one of the best goalies that's up and coming. And he could challenge, you know, in the future for Avesna. And I, their their backup, not his sorry. name is Spencer Martin. He, he's a, he had a decent year last year, but with like a cup of coffee, it was very few games. But he was pretty decent, and he will be the backup this year for uh, Vancouver. So so James says Vancouver. I say Ottawa. Chris, you say Anaheim. I, I still think Chris probably loses this segment. Anyway. Hey, if, if mine hits, though, I am I got a big payout. For what? What's what's your payout? Well, Bragging saying, rights? If, if, if there's betting odds, then I'll give you a I dollar. <laughs> I'll take a dollar. There's one. I'll give you a add, dollar add, if Anaheim makes the playoffs. Add okay, on to I'll, it in the comments, please. All right. I'll I'll, I'll do it even. I'll I'll up it. Okay. I'll we, raise we got two dollars. A dollar and one cent, bro. If two and two Anaheim and makes the playoffs, keep it going. Right, someone comments. someone can clip this for us and uh and send it to us when the, the Ducks <laughs> you know magically get miss into the, the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. When oh, they miss, miss the, playoffs. the playoffs. When they yes. miss the playoffs. Okay. So does that mean Chris owes each of us two dollars and one cent, James? I did not agree to no, that. You already agreed to giving me something. He's just I'm... he's just stupid, is all. It's okay. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's get into some uh, some star stuff here. Okay. Uh, first off, the Ryan Suter article. So uh, your eye had a really excellent article, and he goes super depth into all of this stuff. So I'm not going to bore you with a lot of the the numbers and stuff. But uh, what I am going to do is talk about uh, this one particular uh, paragraph that I wanted to talk about. Again, I'm not going to give you the numbers. Get but with whatever. the drama. Okay. Uh, so obviously, and we all know this, if, if you're on anywhere on Star's Twitter or Star's social media, who it is? Who is the most hated defenseman among Public the Star's team? Number court? one. <laughs> Colin Miller. Yeah, sure. The newbie who hasn't done anything <laughs> wrong yet or anything right yet, I guess, either. Um, it's Ryan Suter, and it's because of the contract that he signed. And, you know, I don't know if that's really his fault or it's Jim Nill's fault or if it's both of their faults. But here's the thing. Uh, and I'm quoting straight from your eyes article because it was very well written. Um Analytically speaking, and that's, again, analytically is a bunch of numbers, Ryan Suter was the Stars' third best defenseman during his first year in victory green. Our good friends at AndyRono.com rated Haskinen's season through their R index, and he was 96% in percentile, which means basically only 4% of players in the league are better than Mira Haskinen. So, I, I mean, that doesn't really surprise me. It doesn't. What I want to get into is, are Stars fans legit in thinking that Ryan Suter should not be in the top four for the Dallas Stars? Are we too hard on him, or should he be given credit for what he's doing for the Stars right now? The, I think they're too hard on him, but I don't think they're way too hard on him. Uh, especially with the way advanced analytics are working in hockey, you can't take them just for what they are. You know how baseball 
the whole, their whole money ball situation. They just took numbers and they're going to build a team based on numbers. You can't really do that in hockey. There's too much flow, too much action happening. It's not as structured as baseball is. Um, and to prove my point with that is Harley was number two. If you read on in that article and he's not on, even on the team. So it, it, it doesn't perfectly match up. Uh, so you got to combine that with the eye test and the analytics. So I think a lot of stars fans are harder on him than they should be. I don't really notice him a lot, which is generally good for a defensive defenseman. But when he makes one mistake, you're going to notice it. And that's going to be the only thing you remember about him too. So I think that's the big reason why people are harping on him. But that being said, he's not bringing a lot of like me and James like talking about with the video game language. He's not bringing a lot of win condition either. So he's kind of just there. I, I think the thing that we don't think about when when I think about Suter specifically is he he eats up minutes like crazy for this team. He does for for how old he's he is. 37. He's playing. He's thirty. He's playing yeah, that, like yeah. He's playing twenty minutes a night at least, and he's looking not bad. I will take looking not bad if you're playing that much time. So. Exactly. And the reason you're seeing that he's looking not bad is because he's playing just defensively. You don't see any flashy plays offensively. And you see the one bad play he makes every five games, and that's the only thing you remember. You don't remember all the good plays. Well, so let's think about this for a second, though. Um, he, he scored seven goals for the Stars last season, which it for a 36-year-old, that's pretty good. I mean, he had seven goals, like, 25 assists, and 82 games. And as there, a top there were four like four, though, that were like just from the point on the power play, right? He just kind of threw them at the net and they went in. And who, if who for cares? someone who calls who himself an offensive defenseman, seven goals is not a lot. I, I don't think – I would consider him more as an all-around defenseman. I don't. He's kind of a two-way. every article I read – calls him an offensive defenseman so i think he used i, I think, think he, he used either. to be he was definitely he used to be but he's not anymore <laughs> he's not anymore so. he's not anymore yeah uh here's here's a random question that popped into my head while y'all were talking because th- there are some and even when they're older i think this still applies to to defensemen but there are some defensemen that they are just super effective when they're playing more minutes. All right. And I'm thinking of like, I don't know if you've watched uh, Thomas Shabbat a lot in Ottawa, but he's one of those guys who eats up more minutes than almost anybody in the NHL. I think he might be number one or number two. When you talk about minutes per game, he plays that much. The, the only problem I see is if he is on that third pairing, if Suter is on that third pairing, does his effectiveness go down at all? Or does it get better when he gets less minutes because I could see it going both ways because he's played so many minutes over the course of his NHL career, even at the age that he's at 37, could his effectiveness be hurt if you, you know, lower his minutes into that third pairing. Add that to one of the question marks for the stars. No idea. He's never played less than 20 minutes a game really. So we'll find out. (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, you, you have to you have to take one. Which one do you think you it is? I have to take one? You have okay, to I'll take say one. no, because he's already not skating like super hard for stuff. He's, he's not even playing an old man's game right now. So <laughs> I don't think his effectiveness would go down. And he's a veteran in the league. He should know how a game feels like without being super immersed into it, in my opinion. But I don't know. I, I don't think his performance would go up at all but i it shouldn't drop so you you really you really don't think that it it would drop at all no he won't score goals because he'll have less time on the ice and he won't be on the power play if he's on the third pairing so it you won't see the goals or the points but i don't think that that necessarily means that he's playing worse he's just has less time to score And, and and that's true too so and, you know, Uri goes through the article and he talks about, you know, who Suter would be best paired to. And, you know, he really needs somebody who he can fully rely on. And, you know, Mayor Haskinen is that guy. And that's probably why those two guys play so well together and why they put them together. But obviously we don't want that because then that puts you with, you know, two lefties on on the same D pairing, which, I mean... Personally, I would write, like to see perfect symmetry between those two pairings. We'll talk about that more later. But who do you think 
Well, I'll, I'll save that for when we get to D pairs later. So, um, so j- just to end it off, do you, do you think Suter gets more crap than he deserves? Yes. Yeah, I agree. So I, I think we need to lay off of him a little bit, let him do his thing. And it, and he, Uri also goes into the article and he points out, you know, it always seems like every fan base has like that one guy that they focus in on and they just hammer, 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 hammer. So like for, I think for a while it was like Cody Eakin for us, you know, way back in the day when he was asked to be the number one center <laughs> before Tyler Sagan. And it, like, that's not his role at all. He should at best be a second line center and he's more like a third, fourth line center. Uh, and then same thing with Jamie Alexiak before his second stint in Dallas. Like mm-hmm. everyone I, looked at him and he was just like, you're not living up to your potential. And, you know, constantly like hammering him and telling him, you know, and, and it always seems like there's that scapegoat for the stars. Yeah. And right it, now it funny. seems to be Ryan Suter. It's funny. Cause when you said that, I also instantly thought of Jordy Ben. And I also, <laughs> I also thought of Yanmark <laughs> for never nope. scoring on. Oh, yeah. Jordy Ben sucks. And I will then, die on that hill. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, that's a good one. I ne- I I Carl hated how so we good. treated him. He was so good, and he got hated his on last so year, much. His last year, he was garbage. Yes, but he, he was, was very good for a long time. For the stars, yes, he very he very much was. Yeah. Good point, Ardo. And then uh, another player I actually thought about was Jason Dickinson, just because the puck would always, you know, but I love fly that. Out that was just me. That was just me. That was just Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jason Dickinson. Chris never liked Dickinson, so I miss him. Yeah, I do too. Did y'all see he got traded? No, I didn't. I think he, he got. Uh, he he obviously he was in Vancouver. In our he, division. Oh, Chicago! I think he went to Chicago, right? Let's go, free oh, wins! Oh man, I feel so bad for him. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh, I feel really bad for him. Okay. Anyways, uh, getting into some stars news. There wasn't much, but it's obviously really big news, and we gotta talk about it. So. Officially, Wyatt Johnston makes the opening night roster with uh, this announcement from the Stars. Logan Stankoven is sent back to Kamloops. No, no, no. Uh, Riley Damiani, Thomas Harley, and Will Butcher are all sent to the AHL. Uh, Riley Damiani and Harley did not have to go through waivers. Uh, Butcher did have to go through waivers. So all those three guys make it there. Um, not I, I kinda, stanky, bro. Not I kind of saw this coming, and mostly because of the play that we saw. And then also the I think it was like the last preseason game we didn't see Wyatt Johnston in the lineup and there was a lot of guys that were you know were given like the quote unquote last chance uh, you know Riley Damiani was in the lineup Stankoven was in the lineup Butcher was in the lineup uh, some other guys were in the lineup too and that's when I thought okay he's he's made the roster Wyatt Johnston has officially made the roster um, and then also for Stankoven I think it's good for him because. Uh, I, a lot of Stars fans don't know how you know uh, major junior hockey works up in Canada, but the owner of the Dallas Stars, Tom Gallardi, actually owns one of the teams up there in uh, Quebec, and it happens to be the Kamloops Blazers, who Logan State Govan plays for. And they're, they've been a really good team for a couple of years, and they have the opportunity to not just win the WHL, but also the Memorial Cup, which is basically like the Stanley Cup for major junior hockey up in Canada. Uh, He gets the opportunity to play for that this upcoming year. So that's really big for him. The Memorial Cup is being hosted at Kamloops. Right, exactly. So So it's kind of in in Gallardi's best interest up there, up in Canada, to send Logan Stakeoven back to the uh, WHO. Um, I I think he was... I think he was really close, but at the same time, Wyatt Johnston was more ready. He, that's a really cool opportunity for Logan Stankov and to get that opportunity that that's like true, like Stanley cup experience that you can get as a young guy. So I'm excited to see what he can do. Um, I think the first call up will be Damiani. I, I think he will be the first call up if there's any kind of injuries throughout the lineup. And I think Harley will be the first call up obviously on the defensive side. But uh, w- what did y'all think about all of that, all those news? Stinky is sad because he's very fun to watch, but lo- like all the reasons you gave, it was pretty obvious what was going to happen. Harley is the biggest uh, surprise Oof. of the preseason, in my opinion. He he just sucked. I mean, I, I feel like 
he's been given so many last chances by the stars. Like, okay, this is the year you got to do it. And he's just never taking it at all. So he, he is coming to a point where he's got to figure it out really soon, or he's going to be a part of a trade package. So some, something's going to come to a head. I, I kind of, well, I know actually I, I mostly disagree with that. There, there, there's some truth to what you're saying, Chris. He, he could just fade into oblivion if he doesn't eventually take his spot on the roster. But, you know, if they really had full faith in him that he was going to take that next step, they wouldn't have gone out and gotten Lundqvist, right? Is that fair to say? What do y'all think? No, because Lundqvist has already showed that he can do it in the NHL. Harley hasn't shown that yet. The, the guy he was going against was Colin Miller, and he lost to Colin Miller. That's not... Yeah. That's not a good sign, in my opinion. The, I'm not too worried about it, to be totally honest with you, because the, we, we've seen in the past, and and maybe it's not fair to compare him to forwards, but, I, I mean, that's just what recent history has shown with the Stars organization. Sometimes it just takes players a little longer to, to get to the NHL level. I mean, it... If I'm looking outside of the Stars organization, look at Kirill Kaprizov. I mean, he didn't come over to the NHL until he was like, what, 24, 25? How old is he? Something like he that. He was playing in a different in league. In the KHL. Yeah, he, he was playing in the playing. KHL. That's but, not a feeder to the NHL, though. He was playing in the KHL because he wanted to. As soon as he came to America, he's in the NHL. Uh, the I don't KHL know, is but, better than the AHL. I, I don't know. I think they're about the same, in my opinion. Oof. But... Uh, but my thing is about Harley is that he's still really young, guys. I mean, he's 21 or 22. It, it it's gonna take him some time. Johnson's it's not like 19. he is he is a first round draft pick, but it's not like he was drafted like top five or top ten. He wasn't, and it was several years ago as well. I think it was was it 2020 or 2019? I mean, what was Johnston? I thought he was like 23rd. He's already here. He was four. 14th or 17th, something around there, in the middle of the first sure round. Um, but he, Har- Wyatt Johnson apparently wasn't supposed to be drafted until like the second yeah. round, apparently. But all I'm saying but, is Harley and Tufty look very similar, and I'm not excited. I, about I disagree either. with that. Tufty, I James agree with, with you. With I think I think side, James shook his head. Yes, <laughs> I think I think Tufty is. I, I I think he's kind of played himself out. I think he's a he's a fringe AHL guy right at this point, which which sucks because he's such a big dude. But uh, there was just one other Harley, thing that Harley I wanted to mention. Time. Go ahead, sorry. That I wanted to mention about in camp is that is that Ardell mentioned it too, but he said that Hanley looked better than Harley in camp, and he really he did. did. And I when love and Hanley. when you're getting when you're when you're getting beat out by our amazing seventh defenseman that thank I thank you for the quote thank you for the quote but but he but you're getting beat out he, hanley's like 27 man i mean he's not he's not going to break into the league as as a top defenseman at this point hanley isn't but he's he's still solid and he's obviously still better than harley yeah. so and i'm gonna give credit to hanley too i thought Hanley was a lock for the seventh, actually. I thought it was just Harley and Miller going at it for six because Hanley has shown that while I don't love him, he is a very good seventh defenseman because he can just slot in and be usable immediately. So he's very good at that. He's good at being ready at a moment's notice. Well, and the thing about him, too, is that you remember he at points he was playing with John Klingberg. You remember that on the top pairing? Uh, so, or on the second pairing, I guess, sorry. Yeah. On the second pairing, and I think it, even at points he was playing with uh, Mayor Haskin and even too, because apparently he was just playing that well. And obviously that's not what the role he was slotted for, so he didn't, you know, particularly play well under those circumstances. But he, he he's just a super solid guy. He's yeah. like an early he's, reliever. You don't want to use him, but he is there. He's a good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's a very I'm, good. I'm not analogy. concerned if if one of our defensemen gets hurt. Like we're not gonna have to just pull up a defenseman who's going to make so many mistakes and let in so many goals. Like I know, I know Hanley is going to be back on the play and, and he's play. going to, yeah. And, and he's going to, he's going to be there and he's going to break it up most of the time. Okay. I think we've kind of beat that to, to a bloody pulp a little bit. So let's move on. Um, opening night roster. 
opening night roster predictions. Okay, um, I need to pull up my own article for this because I really, I really like my what what I did. But um, if you go to blackoutdallas.com, I wrote an article for uh, them talking about you know their roster projections and what I think the roster should look like, and it was kind of biased a little bit. But um, what? would you guys like to see you don't have to say like the full lineup or anything but is is there like a certain line or a certain d pairing you're really excited about i've got a full lineup for you guys okay all right well then let's hear it chris go for it we'll we'll compare right james do you have a full lineup or are you just gonna comment i don't but i can throw one together if if mine isn't similar to one of y'all's okay okay Ryan, you you and me, just tell me when we differentiate. So the first line is the first line of, of, of last year. At least to start. Okay. We got Robertson, hence Pavelski. Duh, yeah. All right. The second line uh, is going to be, I'm saying Marchment, Sagan, and then this is kind of wishful thinking. I want Gurionov on that other side, too, on the second line. I think Marchment and Gurionov is a really good combination, and I think Sagan being the sniper on that line would be great. What do you think, nope, Ryan? That's the that's the exact same as what Same. I had. Wow, I mm-hmm. thought that was a I thought that was a step, you know. All right, whatever. Moving on. So then we got the third line. We've already seen throughout the preseason. Ben is not going to play center anymore. He's going to play left wing. Uh, I got Ben on the left wing. I'm gonna throw Johnston on this on the center of this line, and then Delandria on the other side. So this will kind of be young guys with the old, the old goat. I had the exact same thing except for Delandria. I I had Peterson in his spot instead. Ooh, high on Peterson. Oh, I'm very high on Peterson. Y'all know that. Yeah. All right. And then on my fourth line, I've got Peterson, Foxa, Glendinney, with Kivy being the healthy scratch. Thirteenth. Yeah, the thirteenth forward. Okay. And I assume you have Delandria in place for Peterson there. Right. It's, it's, it's that's the only difference between our lineups, Chris, is the fact that we switch Peterson to Landria, and that's it. James, any thoughts? Um, the only other thing that I thought about is so that's the lineup that I think is most likely, right? The lineup that I think is most interesting is if you throw the hints, Marchman, and Guryanov as the top line. And, and then you and do I d- the Sagan. I d- Pavelski Robertson as a second line and then you and then and then the you look like you have two top lines at that point yeah I would not hate that that would be pretty fun I I really want to see that at some point during the season and we'll and we we could we will definitely I think see that at some point because I, I would think not that, say definitely well I think I mean because the season we go through ups and downs right I mean even last season we went through ups and downs there's going to be times when that top line is is not going to be scoring all right it, let's let's just face it that it's not going to be scoring so what's really nice about this this lineup and the fact that we found out that marchment hints and gary Onoff work really well together is that if the if robo hints and pavelski are not producing at you know what we really need them to be or they're just flat out terrible which i don't see happening but if, if they are flat out terrible then you have that option to to basically switch the left wingers, or, or I guess you could just say switch the centermen in the top two lines and just see how that goes. And that's something in your back pocket that you I, can throw on. I just don't like saying, yes, we're definitely going to see it, or yes, we should go to it soon, because that first line that we have was the second best line in hockey last year behind one of the best lines to ever play. Yeah, the Calgary line. Yeah, You can't just be coy with that. That was the only reason we were in the playoffs is because that line was so outstanding. So I don't think you mess with that unless something is seriously going wrong. So you got, you got to leave that stuff alone, in my opinion, for a good long while. There's got to be some serious problems before that gets changed. But we'll see. Let, let's just say that it if is that fun does and happen- it is interesting. Let's just say that if that does happen, then we're in some deep doo-doo because we, we'd yeah. be in trouble if that's the point. Yeah, we'd, we'd be having issues. Um couple of other thoughts about uh the Sagan Gary on off Marchment line. Um I can kind of see Marchment as a pseudo Jamie Ben replacement if that makes any sense. He's not going to be as scoring as many points as Jamie Ben did when Ben was in his prime. But that. we've seen we've we've seen in the past 
that Gary Onoff has worked well with Ben. And if Marchment is similar in style to the way Jamie Ben played when Ben was at his best, that could be a, a good, you know, it, it could be a good pairing. And then Sagan in the past has worked really well with uh, Jamie Ben and, and, you know, getting scoring chances and scoring and all that sort of stuff. So that that's a really interesting line to me. I, I don't think we've really seen that line, that second line together very much, but I think it would should be something that the Stars should try. Um, moving right. on to that that third line, I'm really excited about that about the third line. Uh, regardless of whoever's on the right side, I'm looking specifically at Johnston and Ben Johnson. and and Johnston. Yeah, and Johnston. <laughs> and Johnston and Johnston and Johnston <laughs> and maybe Peterson if he's on that line. Yep. And it Johnston's really like he still has. This is a nine game tryout. Is really what it is. He can <laughs> fully be sent back if he's not performing up to the specs. So what do you do? Y'all think he's staying after nine games? What do y'all think? That's hard to say. I really don't know. It does. It, is it going to matter on his play, or is, does he stay no matter what? I think it's going to matter on his play. Yeah, hundred so percent. I think it's going to matter on his how play. How good do you think he'd have to do to stay on the team? Is there a points number, gold number? I I, I don't even think it's a points thing with him because uh, because he, he's a rookie. I mean, if you get 15 goals and like, you know, 25 assists out of him this year, I'd, I'd consider that a win right there. That's 40 points out of a rookie. Dude, I'll, I'll take it. That'd, that'd be legit. But I don't even think I'm really worried about that. I'm more worried about for him on the defensive side of the puck. Because, I mean, you could be the greatest offensive threat in the NHL. But well, that's unless, part of the unless, reason unless why he made the lineup though, right? That's because and that's what I was going to say. Good right. both ways. And, yeah, and he's and he's seen as a two way guy, and that's probably why he made the rosters because he's so. Uh, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of right now? First he's so well versed as a young guy in the defensive side of the game that that's why I think he made his way up to the lineup so early. And I think that's the reason why Jacob Peterson got in the lineup last year is because his defensive side of the game was so good. So, um, it. I really like that third line because also it gives Johnson that opportunity to play his natural position. If he is really, really, really struggling at the center position, it's not hard to take Jamie Ben and say, okay, Ben, you're going to play center for a little while. Johnson, you're throwing, you're thrown on the left wing. And I, I think that will be less stress on Johnston and Ben is more than capable of being that third line center. And actually, I think that's a role that he might actually thrive in, in the third line. I think he could be a really, really, haven't, really good third line player. Haven't they already said that Ben is not going to play center, though? Yeah, right. I but think they really don't want to do that. Right. And and what I'm what I'm saying though is that it that is an option there, and that's some nice I don't know anxiety free uh, stuff that you get from putting that third line together. Okay. Uh. uh anyways, uh, Chris, wait, who do you got for your uh, D pairs? I'm curious to see what you got for your D pairs. D pairs. I went with hopeful. I got Heiskanen <laughs> and too. Lundqvist at the top. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> then I got Lindell and Miller. This one was kind of weird. I think Lindell's good enough to have someone who's not great with him. And then I got Suter and Hawk and Paw on the bottom. And I think uh, the second and, thir and third pairs are going to be a lot closer in time, uh, time on ice than they were last season. So you think they're not going to rely on the top four as as much as Rick Bonus did? They're going to rely on Haskinen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. But they're going to give their third pair a lot more playing time. So uh, I've got the exact same thing for the first pairing. Second pairing, I've got Lindell and Hawk and Paw. I love that combo right there. That's just too much men right there between those two guys. And uh, I mean, that's a legit like shutdown pair. If you want a shutdown pair, those are the two guys that you ask. I mean, Lindell is six three, Hockenbaugh is six six. I mean, that's scary. Um, and then uh, uh, you have a really respectable pairing if if you have Suter and Miller there together. And then I think obviously Hanley's the the seventh defenseman. But I, I really like that lineup. I don't think I think again, like you said, Chris, it's hopeful, but. That's what really what I like to see. I love again. I like the symmetry between the between those D pairings. You got three lefties, three righties, and they're playing on their natural side. And again, we complained about it for forever. Miro is on his left side. He's he can unlock his potential if he's playing on his natural side rather than 
on the right-hand side like he's been forced to for the past two or three years by Rick Bonus. So, um, okay, if that's our hopeful, Chris, what what is your actual what is your actual prediction? For, actual, what I think would you Case do? Gannon is likely to play with Lindell on his wrong side. Okay. Um, then Lundquist and Suter or Hockenpah. Uh, probably Suter and then Miller and Hockenpah on the bottom. So the only thing I would change from my hopeful to my legit, and it's only because I saw it today, I think Miller and Lundquist might be flipped. And the reason for that is because we saw that today, that Hayskinen was actually playing with Miller on that top pairing. So that might be a really cool thing for Miller to get a chance to do. Apparently he's really solid defensively. And uh, Lundquist, that would put him on the third pairing. So maybe a little bit less ice time than maybe he would want. But, you know, whatever. So I, I think but, that's a more realistic approach. But also that that having Miller up there on the on the first line makes it to where you're not going to have Lundqvist playing all the time and have it to where he's like he's going to make a lot of mistakes. Lundqvist is going to make a lot of mistakes. I feel like it, he's an offensive defenseman. He's going to be looking more for goals, and he's he's going to have slip ups. So that's just going to be part of it. And if you're trying. And if you're trying to enable Haskinen to score more, that's not who you want him playing with. And and that's a good point. That's a very good point. So, uh, and uh, let me let me say that about Johnston as well, actually, because we we got to be careful about our our expectations of Wyatt Johnston because he is he is going to make a lot of mistakes this year. Uh, just because I mean he, every rookie well, does. Every I, I rookie think you're- does. Your expectation should be he's going to play for nine games and that'll be fun. And then he'll go back to the, to the junior leagues. That's what your expectation should be. If he does anything better, we're just, we're just excited. That's what I'm doing. That's what I suggest for your mental health. Yeah. (laughs) For your mental health. I I also would expect him (laughs) to not play the whole season unless he's doing really good. You know, I may go. I think he plays the whole season guys. I really do. The the more the more I think about it, I think he's he's up here with the big Mental dogs health, for Ryan. good. Mental health. Hey, I I I'm gonna be hopeful for at least a couple of things. Okay, I've already said that I don't think the stars are gonna I'm win the Stanley Cup this year. Way too much already. So. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Two two quick questions, and and then we gotta wrap this up because it's already getting kind of late here. And then uh, because we, we gotta get on this and do this tomorrow, right? First after game review tomorrow night. Really excited about that. Um, two questions at the end of the night, and you can kind of answer them at the same time. What are you most excited about for the Stars this season? So what are you looking forward to the most? What are you most worried about? What's the most anxious thing about the Stars roster for you this season? Chris, I, go. I can't pick what I'm most excited about. I'm going to pick three players. Jay Gottinger. Okay. If Jay Gottinger is one of the best goalies in the league, we're going to be about one of the best teams in the league. Uh, Gurionov, dark horse to be very good this year. He was obviously stifled under the last coach. No, no idea what that was all about, but he's had a really good preseason, really good training camp. He looks to be getting more impactful time. That could be really cool. Marchment, if Marchment is a true top six forward and we get a Gurionov and a Marchment to jump in the top six and we get to play Jamie Benn in the bottom six, that's great. I mean, that would be so good. We'd have so much more scoring. Really, the key is help out the first line. We, we need some more goals from somewhere else. Um, that's what I'm excited for. What I'm nervous for is probably our defense. We'll see how much the loss of John Klingberg actually hurts. Um, and then just the team uh, system as a whole. So it's a big switch. Yeah. We're going from one of the most defensive minded coaches who's basically playing a trap system. And we switched to a super offensive guy who rolls four lines constantly. Everyone's playing pretty equal minutes and we're trying to score a lot more goals. So there might be some discombobulation to start the season, but we'll see how good the, uh, the training camp and preseason was see how ready these guys are to go. Yep. So, for me, the most exciting thing is probably all the scoring that we could see. We we can see all three of Ben Sagan and Gurionov should 
we're all expecting to be much, much better this season. They they should not they should score more than what they did last year. May and maybe not Ben, but we should at least see two out of those three improve. I I, I want to say by at least twenty points each. Twenty goals Jeez. for Ben. What do you think? Twenty, 20 points. goals. Twenty points. Oh no! And for Ben, you can make fifty. You you should make fifty points again. If Ben gets to fifty points again, I will be happy. Okay? I will too. Yeah, I, agree. I I will I I will not be like ecstatic, but. <laughs> I, I will I will be content if he does that. I if if he makes fifty points again though, I want Garyanov to have twenty more points than he did last season, and I want Sagan to have twenty more points than he did last season. That's helping your first line. Yeah. And probably what is most concerning, and I wouldn't say for the whole season, but definitely to start off, is actually the system itself. I'm going with Christians. It's like that that, that can make the beginning of your season tank really fast. And you can still, you can still catch a hold of that system and, and be able to come back into the playoff spots and get back up there. But we'll just, we'll just have to see how it goes. So my answer to both of these questions is actually the same. And I have two answers for it. The thing I'm most excited about is Jay Gottinger and the goaltending. And I'm also really excited about the system. For Jay Gottinger, I mean, if we saw 75% of what we saw in that Calgary series, I mean, that can wipe out so many mistakes. That and we, Chris, you talked about the defense. If our defense is rough, but our but Jay Gottinger is on his game, if he gives us 75 80% of what he did, we're a playoff team. Hands down, in, in my opinion. Um, you've got Wedge Wedgewall who is going to be awesome. Yes, I know I said it wrong. He is Wedgewall. Uh, and he's a, I'm actually really excited about him, and I think he's underrated as a backup. I really do. And uh, he, he's going to play really fantastic for the Stars as well. For the system, I'm really excited about it because there were so many times last year where we did not see enough goals. We just flat out did not see enough goals, and that's been the biggest thing that the Stars have been facing for half a decade, years, maybe yeah. even maybe even six, seven years. All right? Like, going back even further. What I really want to see out of this system is see the Stars be both top 10 in goals against and goals for. If you can do that and be top 10 in both categories, you're a playoff team. And I think this team has I, the capability do, of doing what it. What a statement. No, yeah, I, if I, you can do that, <laughs> you're, you're a cup contender, in my opinion. If yeah, you're top definitely. 10 in both categories, you're a cup contender. Not, not, well, not, Tampa a Bay cup, Lightning not a were, cup were like sixth about? and seventh in, in the top in goals against and goals for. If that's, you're top 10 in both contender. of the, that's literally the game. Keep the puck yeah. out of your net, put the puck in their net. That's the game. Well, there's a little bit more into that <laughs> than that, but yes, Ryan. that's the basic. Keep I, and by I, I gotta be, if I gotta we're be good honest. at scoring and good at defending, we're gonna be good. Let's I got to go. I got to be honest about this as well. I kind of stole this from Razor from their latest episode. But and, and he made a really good point. We don't have to be, you know, number 2 in goals against, which we were a couple of years ago. We were the second best team when it came to not allowing pucks in the back of our net. But if we can sacrifice just a little bit of that defense in order to get some more goals and not be 21st in the league in goals four, which is what where we were, I think, last year. And I think that's pretty generous. Uh, I mean, if we could j just give up a little bit to be top 10 or even, you know, top 15 in scoring, I think that will go miles for us, right? And Absolutely. another thing about the system is we will actually see, like, some urgency. We will see some aggressiveness from the Stars, which we didn't see with Rick Bonus's system. And it worked for the stars last the last couple of years. But it, it, it's not exciting to see. And the aggressiveness that Pete DeBoer teams have, I'm really excited to see for the stars and see how they do. Because when you look at whether he was in Vegas or uh, whether he was, oh, shoot, where was he before that? Uh, New Jersey? I, I can't remember. But, like, those teams were super aggressive. And that's fun to watch. Like, I want this team to be aggressive. And... There was something that they talked about in the podcast with uh, Razor and, and Heike. It, I, I, it's, it's like, uh, I can't remember. It's written in their, the locker room in Frisco. It's like initiate and 
in uh, dominate or something like that. It's I know that's the word initiate is in it. So go out and be the initiative. You go and take care of business in there, and and d- don't just sit back and wait. Because Heike mentioned something about that that in the past the stars would get the lead, and and he even mentioned that that when uh, oh my gosh who who was uh, uh, Dave Tippett when Dave Tippett was the coach of the stars way even further back when they would kind of sort of play in the first second period they take over the game third period they just lock it down and play defense and that's what we've seen even worse so with Rick Bonus so I'm really excited to see that portion sorry I know I'm talking a lot and that's um, why this season is a great season to get your friends into hockey because this is going to be one of the most exciting seasons of Dallas Stars hockey this in a long be time the, this should be the most exciting Dallas Stars season it besides should. since the Lindy Ruff era yeah, since Lindy Ruff, I'll take it. It should be really exciting. And then, so, and then here, here's where I, I talk about the the what I'm worried about. And and I'm not going on wood right now, okay? If we get in a lot of trouble and Ottinger gets hurt, or even Wedgwood gets hurt, we're in a lot of trouble. And just because the goaltending depth is not our strong suit right now. We have depth. What are you talking about? We got if, Kudobin still. Yeah, we got Davi. Exactly, exactly. And and I know in the article that I said he's a he's a capable number three who can come in and be okay. But if one of those guys is out for an extended period of time, I think that really, really, really. Hurts I disagree. Vehemently. Goaltending is the most important position in all of sports. And we have three capable goalies, I think. Dobby is still, he's not, he's not great. He's not ever going to be like he was in that bubble run, but he is still definitely able to be a number three goalie. You're not going to rely on a number three goalie to win you 10 I'm, games, but yeah. he can, he can help you when you're in a bad situation like that. We have more depth than most teams do. Go look at Toronto. They are way worse off. They don't even have any goalies. That's, 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 that's fair. So, that is fair. Uh, I will give you that. We, I will give you that. It's not a pro- injuries and, in the goalie position is not our biggest fear in my opinion. But but also like saying it, it, any team, if any team's first goaltender, yeah. first or second goaltender gets hurt, you're in a lot of trouble. That's it doesn't matter play. what team you are. Okay, well when I if he can play, if Ottinger can play like Vasilevsky and be able to carry the load that Vasilevsky does for Tampa Bay. That will go a long way. But think about it. Well, think about this. Who is the backup for Andre Vasilevsky right now? Do you know? No idea. Oh, he's... Oh, I Don't remember. care. He doesn't get hurt. He's an old St. Louis guy, James. Come on. Allen? Oh, it, uh, it's not it's, Allen. I can't the think of one. it. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Is it who, I don't know who it is. Brian Elliott. Oh, Brian Elliott. dang it. I... You knew that. I I knew that you knew that. But see, Brian Elliott, if he's a starting goalie and Vasilevsky is out for months, that's, 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 I mean, say Tampa Bay would be in a lot better, you know, situation than the Stars would. I think they're a stronger team, which is why Ottinger is that much more important to the Stars than Vasilevsky is for, for uh, Tampa Bay. And I'm not, I'm not discounting it at all. But still, I I think that if if that's an issue, that can be a problem. I really don't so. think that Wedgwood's one of the best backups in the league too. I I disagree with that a lot. He's yeah, not Wedgwood. Best backups, I think Wedgwood is really underrated, honestly. He he's is underrated. Really good since we got him. He's, he, he's lights out, man. He is very I, underrated. But I'm still, 100% when you, disagreeing with you on this one, Ryan. Move that's on. That's fine. And that's fine. But uh, you you got all these other backups. You got Jeremy Swayman in Boston. You've got Ooh. Auntie Ranta and. Carolina, you got Pavel Franco in Colorado. There's lots of other better backups than than Wedgwood, and and I I know I'm reading way into it, but I'm just I'm just we have three goalies. We're fine. We don't need four like we had last year, Ryan. We don't need seven like New Jersey. (laughs) Well, New Jersey didn't even have one that could actually play well. They had one like seven last year. I know. What's your last point? Ridiculous. Okay. So anyway, what I'm worried about with the system is that the system is going to take longer than it should to implement. Uh, the checkpoint for the stars, and I think they've even said it themselves, Pete DeBoer has, is Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving. All right, so late November. If you look at where the stars are at at that point in the season, if they're out of the playoff picture, I think that's a really big problem. To start off the season... I would be I would not be surprised to be the star to see the stars 500, and I would I would actually be okay with the stars being 500 at that point, 
because they're still trying to figure out the system. But by that checkpoint, if the stars are do not have a positive record, if they do not have a good record, then I'm really worried about how the system is going to work for the rest of the season. And I'll, I'll, I have a lot yeah. more, but I'm gonna I'm gonna. DeBoer has a great track record. I think he's got a he's got it. Right. Okay. And then that and that's fair too. I'm that's just why I'm I'm worried about it. That's all. Okay. All right. Uh, game tomorrow, 7:30 yep. p.m. The only place you could find this game is ESPN Plus or Hulu, uh, legally. Uh, I won't be great. watching it anyway. I'll be listening to it. Um, yeah, we got Leah Haxtall, our favorite uh play-by-play gal. No, I'm gonna going listen to it. the ticket. And <laughs> yeah, we're playing the 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 cat pee yellow predators. So the Trashville pee cats. Get your get your catfish on the grill and get ready for some. Good old fashioned catfish spanking. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. This episode's going to be up uh, available for y'all uh, Thursday morning to kind of enjoy before the game uh, tomorrow night. We're really excited about that. We will be doing an after game review after every single Stars game this season. Uh, we're really excited to, to get this going. We're going to have some guests on throughout the season yes? uh yes we will yes. we will Exciting. and actually i'll go ahead and uh and throw a uh one guest in here your eye is actually going to come and do an after game review with us Ooh. at one point oh. so it, 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 it's got to be the it's got to be a gentleman himself yes and i'm really excited about that uh he's it's gonna have to be like a afternoon game so that he he's not doing it at like a lot of Saturday Four in the morning. Games He's a distinguished up. gentleman, so he needs his rest. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, along uh, with Chris and James, this is Ryan. This has been. This is actually season four, Chris. I had to go back and like season four. Sure. This this is officially season four, episode one. Wrap, Welcome to season four, guys. Wrapped up the preseason. Onto the season. Season. We're Let's here. Let's go. Let's go. Go Let's and check go. out. Go and Let's check go. out Starcast Circle Marks Shop. New merch. There's some new merch going Phase on there. Two. And there's also a promo code if you use new season N E W S Z N, you get 20% off your order. So go Guys, and check that there out. There is a bath mat. If you get a sarcastic remark bath mat, I will love you forever. <laughs> I will repost all of your posts for two months. Send send us a picture of the sarcastic remarks bath mat. Once again, thanks to DraftKings Sportsbook for being our sponsor as well. Go and use that promo code THBAN uh, for a special little offer from them. Once again, along with Chris, along with James, my name's Ryan. We'll catch you guys on the flip side. Go, Go stars, stars, beat the, moon. the PCATs. Beat the PCATs. <laughs>